Thanks for joining us, everybody, uh, for this talk on uh, the conveyor community and move to cube. So today we're going to talk about a bunch of different projects uh, or one project in particular, but we do want to let you know that there are a number of toolkits and web services that uh, Red Hat and our partners in the community are working on. Um, the first is actually a migration toolkit for applications, which helps you break down your uh, applications, specifically Java applications, and helps you understand how you can modernize them. Uh, so this would include migrating from something like Spring Boot to Quarkus and modernizing your applications to see if they can run on OpenShift. Another toolkit uh, we're working on is called Migration Toolkit for Containers. Uh, this is a toolkit that helps you migrate your applications between different Kubernetes clusters. In this case, specifically, it was designed to help customers move between OpenShift version 3 and OpenShift version 4. So it will migrate your namespaces, your objects, and your persistent data. Um, a third toolkit is the Migration Toolkit for Virtualization. This toolkit is actually under development currently, and we expect to have it released uh, later in the year. And it is a toolkit that helps you mass migrate virtual machines uh, from VMware into OpenShift virtualization, so being able to bring your virtual machines forward into a Kubernetes orchestrated environment. Um, and today, what we're going to focus on uh, with, uh, with both Amit and Ashok from uh, the IBM research team is a tool called move to Cube. And while this isn't an officially supported toolkit from Red Hat, uh, we're excited that it's been open sourced. And really, they're going to talk to you about how it can help you increase uh, the efficiency of moving um, from, from Swarm and from Cloud Foundry to a Kubernetes environment um, and how it was developed. And, and, and they'll actually give you a demonstration of that today. So um, really what's important here is how um, uh, not only just the toolkits that we're developing, uh, but how we're going about developing this. In the Red Hat fashion, uh, we are, we've open sourced all these tools and we are actually actively developing them in a community called the Conveyor Community. And the Conveyor Community is really um, Red Hat's um, uh, really attempt to start building a catalyzed community around the tools, best practices for how you um, break down monoliths, how you adopt containers, how you embrace Kubernetes. So we're excited about this. If you're interested, please join us. It's a completely open community. Uh, we would welcome any contributions or um, you know, just any involvement and participation in any of the talks or meetups uh, that we're scheduling. So with that, I'll hand it over to uh, Amit. Hi, everyone. Thank you, James. So here we take a look at a uh, bit more detail on what Move to Cube is about. Uh, as James mentioned, in this community of Conveyor, we are building a variety of tools that help you move your applications to cloud native. And one of the challenges that we find um, our clients and users out there running into is when you're moving from one of these uh, platforms such as Docker Swarm or Cloud Foundry over to Kubernetes or OpenShift, you need deep skills in both the source platform and the target platform, and of course, skills in the application itself, good expertise and knowledge about the application. And Move to Cube tries to accelerate that process by taking away or reducing those skill requirements and the time, time required to perform these uh, replatforming activities. So Move to Cube starts off with any of these source platforms, uh, and, and the first thing it does is discovers your deployment specification on the source platform. So if you've got containers running on Docker Swarm or an application running on Cloud Foundry, it'll go and discover everything that's needed to be to, to specify that, that particular deployment. It'll translate that over into a Kubernetes specification. And in the cases where the source platform is not already containerized, for example, Cloud Foundry or uh, say native Java applications, it will actually containerize them for you, um, and it provides three different mechanisms for that containerization. You can choose a Docker file-based containerization approach, so you actually get a Docker file out of the process. You can use cloud-native build packs if you're coming from something like Cloud Foundry, or you can use S2I source to image to go directly from your source code into container images running on OpenShift. After translating into a Kubernetes model, uh, Move to Cube then adds in the best practices and features that are relevant for Kubernetes that, that were not relevant in the source platforms. Allows the user to actually customize it as per their needs, uh, as per their enter enterprise requirements, for instance, and then generate the deployment artifacts that you can take and deploy onto a target cluster or you can pull into your target CI CD pipeline. So you get your Kubernetes YAMLs, uh, but move to Cube will also generate Helm charts for you. Um, it can generate an operator to uh, deploy that application easily. 
And it's starting to support certain K-native capabilities, in particular K-native serving. And the team has also started uh, generating some artifacts out of Move to Cube for Tekton pipelines. So overall, end-to-end -end Move to Cube really tries to provide you an integrated tool that performs discovery of your deployment spec, containerizes them where relevant, translates over to Kubernetes, and then optimizes and customizes all the way to a set of deployment artifacts that you can use. So with that, let me hand it over to my colleague Ashok, who is going to take you through the details and a demonstration of the tool. Thanks, Amitabh, for the overview of the capabilities of MotoCube. Now we are going to into a demo mode where we are going to look at how these capabilities are cap encapsulated by the different workflows of MotoCube. MotoCube can cater to very complex scenarios where you have multitudes of applications with different characteristics or you can handle the simpler use cases too. And MotoCube has the capability to be um, integrated without a human interaction or with a human interaction. Let's see how each of these flows can be embodied in MotoCube. MotoCube can be consumed in two different ways, one as a command line tool or as a web interface. As a command line tool, um, you can get it installed using the curl command that you see here. You just copy paste it into your terminal and you have MotoCube in your system in a matter of seconds. Or you can grab it from the GitHub releases or using the go get command. Similarly, the web interface can be installed using a Helm chart or Docker Compose or as an operator. Uh, the repository uh, indicated below is the uh, command line tool repository. You can head over there and um, ask us any questions as issues or interact with us. As I mentioned, uh, MotoCube can be consumed in multiple ways. The simplest of it is a single command flow where you just invoke the MotoCube translate command with pointing it to the source folder. It will then interact with you and create all the target artifacts that are necessary for deploying that application, which you can then put it into your CI-CD pipelines or directly deploy to your cluster. For more complex scenarios, MotoCube can be consumed as a two-step process or a three-step process. In a two-step process, first you do the plan where you point your MotoCube to the source folder, which analyzes the source folders and give, it, give you a plan of the different services it's identified that and how it is planning to translate. You can then edit it and give hints to MotoCube on doing a better translation. Once you have the uh, plan ready, you can invoke the translate phase, which will then create all the target artifacts for you. And then there is an optional step. If you want to analyze all the um, runtime artifacts, you can do the MotoCube collect and it will automatically look at all your um, runtime instances that are in context in your uh, terminal. For example, if you have a Cloud Foundry instance, it will get all the information of all the build paths and also the information on the Kubernetes clusters that are there. We'll look at what information it collects in a short while. But this information can then be put as part of the source folder that you point to in the plan phase, which will then look at all of them together and guide you through the process of using them uh, as part of the plan and also the translate. Now, let's look at a few demo flows where um, many of the source platforms can be translated to uh, Kubernetes. The demos that we are going to see today are all available in the MotoCube's demos repository which is um, right here and you have the uh, tutorials folder where you have md files explaining the different steps you need to follow and the sample applications are there in the samples folder uh, we are going to use a checked out version of that folder right here and what we are going to do is to go through a few flows let's look at uh, what is inside the samples folder the samples folder, as you can see, has multiple different kinds of applications. In this, we'll go through a few of them to look at the major capabilities of MotoCube. The first one that we are going to look at is the e E2E flow, where there are two applications, a Golang application and a Node.js application. This could be your Cloud Foundry application, or it could be a normal application you uh, deploy to your uh, VMs. We will look at how this can be translated to Kubernetes. We are going to use a one-step process for this uh, flow because it's a very simple use case. The first thing that you do is to do a MotoCube translate and then you point to the samples slash E2E flow folder. Once you do that, what it does is it goes through each and every file 
and then tries to um, analyze each one of them and understand them and then tries to interact with you whenever it has a doubt so right now it is creating the plan for you internally and then uh, then it'll come back to us when it has some doubt so now it says that it has identified two services and is asking they want to translate all of them and then it says that okay of in the both the services i can translate using multiple containerization techniques it might be docker file s to y or cloud native build pack so in this case let's just uh, go with a docker file and then it's saying what do you want to create do you want to create a yaml files or do you want to create help charts or knative artifacts now let's go with help and it's asking what kind of cluster you're going to deploy to do you want to deploy to your OpenShift cluster your kubernetes cluster or a particular flavor of uh, kubernetes uh, may it be ibm uh, kubernetes or OpenShift or azure aws or gcp or you can have your own custom ones which we will look at shortly and then it's asking what are the services you want to expose externally so you can select whatever you want to expose externally then it's asking where your um, registry is i'm just going to point to the registry uh, us.icr.io and then it's asking the namespace in which you want to deploy I'm going to do to m2k demo and then i'm going to uh, specify my pull secret And then it's asking for the ingress hosting. So I'm going to grab that from the cluster I'm going to deploy to. This is the ingress subdomain of the IBM Kubernetes cluster I'm going to deploy to. Once I mentioned that, it's asking for information on your secret. Um, by default, uh, um, if I don't give any secret, it will. Um, create a HTTP uh, ingress endpoint. If I give a secret, it will create a HTTPS endpoint for us. So I'm going to go with defaults for everything else, including the CACD pipeline. And now it has created the artifacts for you in the folder called my project, since uh, we did not uh, override the default project name. So let's see what's inside this my project folder. So it has created multiple artifacts. That's a readme which guides you on the next steps. But essentially, there are many scripts in the base level, like build images, copy sources, and uh, even a Docker Compose file and a few others, which we can use to install. In addition to that, uh, it has created a Helm chart for us that you can see here. Um, there's a chart.yaml, there's a readme, and then the, all the artifacts, the deployment artifacts, the service artifacts, the ingress, everything is created, including, including a values.yaml, which parameterizes most of the default artifacts. In addition to that, uh, it has created a sample operator for you, and um, which is a Helm-based operator. Also, it has created a CI-CD pipeline for you. This CI-CD pipeline uses this containerization script. Since we mentioned um, to Motocube to create Docker files for us, it has created a Docker files and scripts that can build the images using the Docker files. So now let's look at, take this artifacts and try to deploy to a cluster. So the first thing we will do is go into the folder and look at all the artifacts. The first thing that we need to do is to copy the sources. So the containerization scripts that you saw are all Docker files and stuff, but it requires a source code for it to be able to build. So let's do the copy sources and then point the source to the folder that we gave as input to Motocube. In this case, it's E2E flow. And once we do that, the files are copied. The next thing that we do is to create the images. So we call build images.sh, which builds all the images. And then um, the next thing that we do is to push the images to the registry. Since uh, while Motocube was um, translating, it asks us all the information by default, it fills, pre fills most of the information so that you can push the images. So now, uh, it is pushing the images to us.icr.io slash m2k demo slash um, golang and then in and node.js2. So once it finishes pu pushing the images, now we will try to deploy this uh, into the cluster. So let's see how that process goes. Okay, now that it has pushed all the images, the next step that we are going to do since we have created a Helm chart is to install it using the Helm install command. So here we are going to do the Helm install and let's see what happens. So now 
it is trying to see whether there is a project by the name my project exists if not it's trying to create one and it's installing to the cluster we just saw in the chrome and it has exposed the application in the form of this ingress so we will just copy this and then we'll try going there so it has taken a, it will take us to the base uh, ingress and then there were two applications which were put into colang slash colang okay, so let's since we did not give a tls secret let's go to the http endpoint okay and for node.js2 let's go to the http endpoint and once we go there you see the application if you had given the tls secret the https endpoint will also be working so what we just now saw is take two applications which you normally deploy to an uh, vm or um, cloud foundry and deploy it into kubernetes in a matter of few seconds or minutes now let's look at uh, a few other the source platforms uh, one of the more common use cases is a docker compose when you develop your application you generally create a docker compose file and then uh, you decide to deploy to kubernetes and then you have to rewrite all of them into kubernetes in this case let's try to take the docker compose file and then deploy it to kubernetes for that we are going to use this sample over here where, which is a docker compose.yaml file which has a few services let's use a single command flow again to translate the docker compose file i'm going to call motocube translate and then point to sample slash docker compose folder it could have multiple docker compose files um, in case of production you might have multiple on them motocube has a capability to um, go through all the uh, Docker Compose files and combine them and give a holistic view for you. Now it is going through the uh, files and trying to help you with the translation process. Let's see what it comes up with. What are the services it has identified? It has found three services, yeah, API service, a Redis service, and a web service. So it's asking whether to translate all three of them. And it's saying that, okay, these are containerized ones, the images exist, so you can reuse them. Do you want to reuse the container images? I say yes, and then I create, okay, it's asking whether you want Helm chart or uh, yeah, direct YAMLs or Knative artifacts. Let's go with YAMLs. And then it's asking for the cluster type you want to deploy to and the services that needs to be exposed. And let's go with the defaults for everything else. And once we have that, uh, it will create the My Projects folder again. Let's look at what is there in the My Projects folder now. now since uh, this is a pre-containerized environment, the container files are already there and uh, only the Kubernetes artifacts are created. It has created a deployment artifact for you, a service YAML, the ingress, and for the different services. So this is a quick way where you can take your Docker Compose file and within a few seconds, you can have your all your Kubernetes artifacts required to deploy to your cluster. The next flow that we are going to see is uh, a combination of multiple language uh, stacks the java go python and stuff which needs to be containerized and then put into kubernetes let's see a quick example of that for that what we are going to do is to we are going to take this language platforms folder which has multiple applications which are going to be translated to so for this um, we are going to use a two-step approach the first is a plan phase and for plan we are going to input this as a folder and once I give this language platforms, it's going to go through each and every file in there and combine them and trying to make sense out of them. And then come up with a plan for you, which you can then curate. In addition to the default integrated um, containerization techniques, Mootcube also supports extending the containerization techniques. In this source folder, it there is an extender containerization techniques that is being part of the source folder. Here you see this Java Gradle where there is a M2K DF direct and then a Docker template as Docker file. So Mutucube can understand this folder and treat it as one of the containerization techniques. It will use this containerization technique to containerize the different folders wherever it is feasible. We will see in this example how that is going to work out. So it has created an m2k.plan for us, which is essentially a YAML file. So here is a file that we are going to see. 
So it has um, multitudes of options, it has different services and the different information it has collected and the different ways in which that apl application can be containerized. To help us with the containerization process, what we are going to do is to uh, use the translate command to take us through the uh, curation of the plan too. For that, I'm just going to do a translate minus C, which is a curate for the plan. So it asks what are the folders that needs to be containerized. In this case, uh, these are the applications I, I need to containerize. So uh, asking me options. And it's asking what are the containerization techniques you want to support. And for each of the folders, now it's asking for each of the folders, I know different ways of containerization. Which one do you want to use? For example, for Node.js, I can create a Docker file. For PHP, I can, for example, choose S2Y. For Python, I can use Cloud Native Build Pack. Uh, and then for um, Ruby, I can uh, uh, use a Docker file. And for Golang, I can use um, Docker file. For Java Gradle, I can use a Docker file. Now, when I choose Docker file based containerization for Java Gradle, it is giving me two different ways in which it can create a new Docker file for us. One is using the inbuilt technique m2k asset slash docker file slash java gradle or it's pointing to a folder in our source which is java gradle folder that you see here so it has automatically used this to try and containerize the folder so let's go with that similarly you can choose the other options too and then you can point it to the uh, cluster that you want to deploy to and then uh, you have the different services that needs to be exposed let's go with the default values for everything else once it's done, uh, our containerization scripts are all ready. So let's look at the output. So here, uh, if you notice what it has done is it has created the YAMLs for us. For each of the folders and the services is identified, it has created the deployment artifacts, the service artifacts, and the uh, ingress as required. And it also created a simple Docker Compose file for you so that if you want to test the images locally, you can do that. Um, you can follow the same approach that we uh, used for the E2E flow to take these artifacts and deploy to a cluster. Uh, so you can see that it has created Docker files for the applications which we uh, told it to create a Docker file for. And it has used S2I for PHP for example and Cloud Native Build Pack for Python. And uh, the uh, build images command is intelligent enough to use the right ones and build the images for you and follow the same process. Also, it has created all the Tekton artifacts that are required if you want to use Tekton as your uh, CACD pipeline. So what we just saw is a very simple way in which you can have a very diverse source environment and take them all and containerize it and deploy it to Kubernetes. Now let's look at more, a few more flows. One of the other flows that is of interest is um, porting between different versions of Kubernetes. For example, 1.9 version of Kubernetes has a few um, artifacts which are in uh, v1 uh, beta 1 version for example like deployment whereas 1.17 uh, might support um, v1 version of uh, deployment and when you try to deploy the v1 beta 1 on a cluster which supports only v1 you will get an error motocube can help you with that in addition to that it can also help you change flavors let's say you want to use the best features of OpenShift. So instead of creating a deployment uh, for you, you want a deployment config. Um, Motocube can help you with that. So let's create, take some Kubernetes artifact and convert to uh, OpenShift. For that, uh, what we are going to do is to use this particular folder which is named Kubernetes to Kubernetes. Um, it, there are some API applications with a deployment a service and uh, a Redis with a deployment and service and then a ingress deployment and service. We are going to use a single step approach to do this translation. Before that, from the previous flow, let's remove the plan file which was created. Now, let's do motocube translate minus s and then point to the samples. So now it's going through each and every uh, Kubernetes artifact and trying to understand what is there and what needs to be translated. It has identified three services. Let's go with all three of them, reuse them, and let's stay, say we want a Helm chart out of this. And then we want to target OpenShift. And um, what services we want to expose? Let's expose uh, the WebLO. 
and let's go with the defaults for everything else and once it's all done it has created the my project folder let's look at what's in there so it has created a helm shot for us which has a deployment config a image stream and a server a service yaml so it was and it has also created a root instead of an class because we are targeting an openshift cluster so with a very simple approach you can move between clusters quite easily with the help of motoq the next flow we are going to look at is a cloud foundry translation here we are going to uh, use the sample called cloud foundry over here there's multiple artifacts as you can see over here let's start motocube um, plan phase on it before that um, we are going to use a three stage process the collect tool so motocube collect is nothing but you just do a motocube collect in your terminal and it can uh, automatically understand the cloud foundry instance and the um, kubernetes instance in your contact and collect information for you we have done this before for us so and it has created two files the cluster.yaml and a uh, cf apps.yaml let's look at what that information is so in this case i'm going to first open the cf apps.yaml So in the CF app start YAML, there are information like the build packs that are supported, uh, that is used for running this particular application, the memory, the instances, and the ports uh, that are supported. If there is an environment variables, it would have collected that information too. So this is the runtime information of the particular application that you are trying to translate. Similarly, it has also collected some target uh, cluster information. Since Kubernetes cluster was in context, uh, it was able to collect information about the storage classes supported by it, the API versions, and also the priority between them. You can always edit it to give hints to Motocube on which API versions to support. And in addition to that, there's a manifest.yaml which tells the application uh, how to deploy it, which will pack to use and stuff. And in addition to that, there are source folders. Let's take start the next phase on this which is the plan phase for while it while we start the plan it's going through combine the runtime artifacts with the source artifacts and all the information that it can understand out of it and going to come up with a plan for us let's look at what is in the plan so it has created a plan for us so let's get that plan so in the plan uh, here you can see some uh, information there were different options and one of the options is to containerize the application using cloud native build pack um, and it's saying i can containerize it using two different ways um, a cloud foundry uh, image or a, um, a google image and then it is saying it can use the source artifacts and also the runtime information and combine all of them and do the translation in addition to that, it has pointed to the target cluster, a cluster.yaml, which you, it can deploy to. Now, let's invoke translate on this. So, as soon as I select translate, um, let's say I'm interested only in cloud native build pack. Um, there are two images uh, for on which I can target, and then what kind of artifacts are required, what kind of cluster. Here, you can see there is a new cluster type that is uh, listed cluster.yaml, which is your custom cluster which that you have collected. Once you do that, uh, it can create all the artifacts for you in the my project. So let's look at what is there. So here it has created all the deployment config. It was an OpenShift cluster that we collected. So it has created the deployment config in uh, image stream root and the service for us. So that is a simple way where you were able to combine multiple information uh, like runtime information, source information, and even the target cluster based information and do a holistic translation. Similar to all the command line flows, we can also use the web UI for do the translation. It has all the capabilities that we saw um, in the command line tool. For that, all you need to do is to head over to the Motocube UI repository, clone it, and do a Docker Compose app. So let me take you through the simple flow of that. I'm going to go to the Motocube UI repository, and then I'm going to um, use this Docker Compose YAML and translate it. So I'm going to do, yeah. 
Docker Compose up and it starts the MotoCube uh, components that are required for the UI to run. So once it's up, uh, it will be available in the 8080 port, which I'm going to go to now. As you can see, there is a pre-existing project uh, called Demo. Uh, this is because there is already an existing wor workspace folder into which there was a pre-existing project. So you can just start it in that same folder and you will see all your previous projects listed. In addition to that, let's create a new project called KubeCon. And let's go to the details of it. And let's upload our first asset. The first asset that we are going to upload is uh, the Docker Compose file that we got. There, it is in the folder called uh, UI Local Workflow. And we are going to upload a zipped version of that file. And as soon as we upload, the file is available there. And uh, we create the plan. And uh, it is going in the background trying to create the plan uh, for the Docker Compose file we just selected. Once a plan is available, uh, we can see the different uh, services there. For now, let's look at a previous project for which we had already created the plan. Uh, if there are more services, it will be listed there, uh, which we can again curate. And once that is done, uh, we can go to the Target Artifacts tab and click on Translate and go through the same QA flow that we uh, just went through from the command line. All the features that we saw in the um, uh, command line tool are available through the UI tool. And uh, this we can download with uh, as a zip file. That's a quick overview of Motocube's uh, capabilities and uh, demo flows. Now, um, let's look at the different requirements for Motocube. Uh, depending on the source platforms, it can um, gracefully scale depending on the data available. If there are manifest files alone available or source code is additionally available or runtime instances available in case of Cloud Foundry, you can create the right artifacts depending on what is available. Similarly, for Docker Compose 2, uh, depending on the Docker Compose files available or if source code is available, it can create the uh, uh, right destination artifacts. Um, if uh, there, there is only source applications where, uh, need, which needs to be containerized, Motocube can handle that too and can create the right artifacts. Uh, with that, I would like to hand it over to Amit for a quick overview of a case study we had with Motocube. Thank you, Ashok. Uh, so folks, here's an actual case study where we took Move to Cube and uh, ran it through, ran it on an actual application. In this case, the application was running on Docker Swarm. It had a variety of containers. For example, it had custom containers written in Java. It had custom containers written in Node.js. And it had some middleware containers, for example, MongoDB and uh, Data Power. And we wanted to actually do the translation over to uh, OpenShift, get the application running on OpenShift, uh, and then compare that with the process where everything was done manually. Uh, and to prove to ourselves whether we actually do see productivity gains. So the table here actually shows you some of the results. Um, it shows six task groups uh, ranging from discovering relevant assets, uh, translating artifacts that are easy to translate, the ones that are more complex to translate, uh, adding in features and best practices for OpenShift, um, customizing, and then right-sizing for the configuration and deploy. Now in this case, the manual activity was actually an estimate. Uh, and the move to cube activity was actually done in practice. And we saw a very nice 9x productivity gain for this roughly 100 container scenario. Of course, this can go up and down a bit depending on your source platform and the skills of the user and, and, and specific scenario of the user. But this was a great proof point that uh, really convinced us to go further and build this tool out um, further for a variety of other platforms. And this is our closing slide. Thank you for your time listening to us. Um, here you see uh, various links out in the community, uh, all housed within Conveyor. So please uh, head over to any of these links so you can uh, contribute. Um, you can try use the tool. You can contribute and submit pull requests. Uh, we'd love to have more participation from the community.